Hi everyone, Jordan Goldmine here. I wanna show you how I built this awesome chart. Like, take a look at this, okay? I got the total tornadoes per month over a full 45 year time series. That's this down here, and this is real data, ladies and gentlemen. So if I click this and I go to select data, you can see it comes from this back end. We got the year, we got the month, we got the date, which is the year and the month combined, and then we got the value for that. I actually used, in another video, I used Power Query to make this, um, but we're gonna skip that. Let's just assume it's already pre-made because it's an example. All right, so here's what I did. We got that data right there. I created a pivot table out of that data, data that has just the date and the values. Then to get the timeline, um, I assigned a timeline to it, and then I assigned this table, or excuse me, this chart is actually a pivot chart. So as I update this timeline, it will update this chart because it's just gonna, um, I just have the dates here and the values over on the right side. So it's just gonna you know, increase or squish as the case may be. Then what I do is I use some mathematical formulas you know, math, Excel formulas, uh, to find the smallest date and then the greatest date, right? And then I report that back here, and then I create these two extra series here that's gonna test if the values are between that. And those two extra series are gonna inform this little baby chart, this long boy down here, right? So as I change stuff over here, as this changes, it's gonna actually change um, the minimum maximum date, which we then can report back on this chart. Pretty cool. Watch this. I'm going to build it, no VBA, just using pivot tables and formulas, and it's going to be awesome. You want to copy this chart to use in your work? Please do. Go out and use it. Tell me how you use it. Love to hear it, okay? Go ahead, go ahead and um, check out the uh, link down below in the description because that's going to give you what you need. All right, so let's build this ourselves. I'm over here. I've created the example data. I've already done this uh, for you, so... Um, you can go ahead um, and start here if you're following along. What do I need to do? Well, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click insert, we're gonna click pivot table, we're gonna do an existing worksheet, at least I am. You know, do whatever you want on yours, right? So existing worksheet, we'll just drop it right here. Okay, so I've dropped it right there. I have the date value like that. Oh, Excel, look, look, Excel's trying to be Power BI with this, this like date hierarchy. So I'm gonna right click and go to ungroup. Come on, Excel. Know, know what you're good at. Okay, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna take this value here. This is like the tornado values. I'll drop it here. It's gonna give me the sum. Doesn't matter if it's the sum or the average, as long as it's numeric, right? Um, as long as it's uh, it's numeric, because it's not compounding anything. There's no aggregation going going on. So it's effectively just reporting it back to me. Um, once I've done that, I can go to insert here. We will hit a line chart like this right here. So I've done a line chart, and right now it's just showing me everything. That's fine. Let's uh, let's make this better looking than it is, so that I'm not like bothered by it as I keep going along. So I'm gonna click these here. I'll hit delete, drop these here, hide all of these. Let's get rid of the total. I don't. What do we need the total for? Okay, we'll click that there. The other thing I like to do, you'll see me do this a lot, is I usually format the plot area with a line, and then I'll hit the chart area like that and hit no line. And then we'll take off grid lines because we don't need grid lines anymore. Okay, took them off like this. And cool, there we go. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click insert. We're gonna click timeline here. You see it picked up the date. If you haven't used timelines before, woo, you are missing out. Okay, so a timeline allows us to slice on time one weird thing about timelines is it always starts over on the right with all this like space. But watch what happens. I'm gonna start slicing here, and you see it's actually uh, giving me kind of the zoomed in version of what's over here. And if I go over here to months, and I don't wanna deal with months because I wanna look at something bigger, let's look at quarters like that. So look, this mechanism working perfectly. Look how quick it was to make something like that. Okay, so what do we wanna do next? Well, maybe what we wanna do next is make our bigger long boy chart which is going to report to us you know everything in total so uh to do that what we'll do is i'm going to highlight these two c and d i'll hit control shift down and i'm just going to click insert here and watch this is just going to insert a line chart um with everything i want on it right so it's going to give me this is going to be the axes right here and then this will be the values so let me hit control x and i'm just going to hit control up 
get myself back to the top like that. Okay, so let's fix this one up a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of these. I'm gonna put in a border, right? So let's go to format. And you know what happens when a chart works out, right? It gets stacked. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. Okay, so here's shape outline. I'm gonna take that off and let's make this here, let's make this outline itself kind of a little less. I think I used purple in my original example. We're gonna make it like that and um, let's make it thinner, shape outline. Now, w wouldn't it be great if there was a way to edit, oops, wrong one, edit like a chart you do in Excel, but like kind of like how you do it in Power Query. If someone out there knows how to make that add-in, for the love of God, please make it already. Okay, so we have here, we have the the um, long boy chart that we're gonna deal with. And then over here, I'm gonna do min date, max date, max value. Okay, so if we wanna get the minimum, I'll type in equals minimum here. Go to our example dashboard. All I do is select row A like that, or column A, excuse me. I'll select column A. That's gonna pull back the minimum date because that's what's in column A. We'll just uh, format. And then I'll take this here, control C. I just wanna get the max equals control V. I'm gonna replace that with a max like that. And we'll just use the format pater to reformat that. And then if I want to get the max value, which is gonna be in this table here, I can just grab this like so. Okay, so I got the max value of 399. This is called table three. Um, I'm gonna let that one slide because I'm building it and you don't know this, but I've done this like in four takes now. And I'm at a point where I'm just, I wanna just do one take and and go and not deal with editing a million different things because I have so much going on. All right, so um, I don't like that it's called table three. You should change the name of a table. Please follow my advice. Highlight series, we're moving on. Highlight series value, and then we're gonna call this like highlight. I like to think of it as a background. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a trusty if and if uh, this date here is greater than or equal to the min date, and, ooh, that could have been a major mistake. We're gonna hit F4 on that. Gotta lock that guy in. All right, if this is less than or equal to the max date, F4, lock her in, close that. If it's true, we're gonna have it just replace the value. If not, we're gonna have it generate an NA error. We do that because if we want it to be plotted, as I'll show you right here, I'm gonna just highlight this whole thing and hit Control C. If we want it to be plotted, it won't plot NAs. So I hit Control V, boom, look at that. And how did that work? Well, if we scroll down, you see that when the value is greater than or equal to the timeline selected range, it's gonna report the value. And if we put, we, we just pasted it on top, it's just another, you know, um, it's just another series pasted on top now let's get that background series. So what I'm gonna do here is, I wanna test if this is an NA. So if it's true, if it is an NA, um, we don't want it to do anything. So I'll just type in is NA here. So if it's, it's gonna either return a true or a false. Um, if it is an NA, we don't want it to do anything. So actually what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take it not true. So if it becomes a false, that's, you know, trues and falses in Excel are ones and zeros. I'm just multiply it by this max value here. Hit F4, I'll hit enter, so it's gonna be 0, 0, 0, 0, until we get to the 399. So we're using the max value uh, in this case. It could just be an arbitrarily large value, but the reason we're using the max value of the series is that we don't ever want that background to be smaller than the max value. So that just sort of keeps it visually, um, if we ever do reach that 399, it will never go over. So I'm gonna take this whole thing, this whole column, I'll highlight it, Control C. Let's go back to our chart here. I'll click on it at Control-V. Now you see it creates this kind of ugly looking um, line chart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to Change Series Type. And under the Highlight Background, I'm gonna make that a uh, clustered column like that. I'll hit OK. Now you see it's a whole bunch of ugly lines, but if I right click it and go to Gap Width, and we make that a zero, it's gonna fill in. So look, the rest of this is formatting. As you can see, this isn't, I would say, the most beautiful looking set of colors. Let's see, let's see if we can fix it up just like a little bit. Yeah, why not? That looks good. Okay, 
So once I have that here, I can hold this, I'll hit Control C, and then we're gonna go back over here and drop her in. And then what I could do is I could just sort of stretch this out, right? So if you wanna build this on your own, it doesn't require a whole lot. You just need these components. I'll let you to do any sort of styling that you want. I'll leave that to you, but look how easy that was. And we did it so quickly. And once you've built it once, it's like plug and play with the data. Okay, so if you really like this, would love to hear it in the comments. Something else I have for you, okay? So you heard me complaining. Uh, my life is very busy right now. Um, and that's a good thing. We like that, right? It's good to, to be busy. And I still need to put out content. The process of, um, of editing this content, it's really just, it's overwhelming for both um, Rick and I, for the things that we have going on. So for now, um, I ha we have improved our equipment greatly. I'm in a new microphone and we got a new camera. I just got a green screen. I got just got some lights. So for now, for videos like this, I'm not gonna edit them. What I wanna know from you is, um, are you okay with this quality? Like, I wanna make sure that you get value. But sometimes, like, if I don't have time that week, I just wanna go on and I wanna stream and uh, record something. Cause I think that the value of what I can give to the community is actually greater than the time it takes to uh, edit a video and make it like perfect and whatever. And you know, who am I really even competing with? Like all, every, all the other Excel people on YouTube are my friends. So, um, you know, I, I kind of want to own this sort of style, but at the same time, I want to make it valuable for you. So this is really your chance to have a say in what happens at Excel TV. And also get this, if you wanted to help me edit videos, if you had an expertise in that, um, and could do that, and, you know, maybe even want to make some videos of your own. Yo, just let me know. I mean, I want this to be as much your community as it is, um, you know, anything else. So with that, thank you for listening to me. Keep on excelling. Check out our other videos. Please let me know what you think in the comments and make sure to download this file. Until next time, again, keep on excelling.